Hi, my name is Michael with Icon Assist. Today we'll be walking through a demo of our Shutterstream and Shutterstream 360 product photography software communicating our automated background removal tool when using a reference image. Uh, the setup that we have today for the lighting is our medium LumiPad 360 lighting kit. It consists of two tower lights as well as a backlight panel working with a compatible camera. This is a Canon DSLR, just an entry level camera connected via USB to our computer. We'll be shooting with our Silver Mid 360 product photography turntable as well as our 20 inch acrylic riser. Now our automated background removal tool when using a reference image, this uses computer vision to understand where a product is versus where the background is and can automate the background removal process so you can achieve images with either pure white backgrounds and or transparent backgrounds. Now we'll be driving everything directly through our software so we'll turn your attention over this way and we'll get started with the workflow. Alright so what we're seeing here is the main UI of the Shutterstream software and in the center of the screen you can see that's a preview, a real-time preview. If you look you'll see my hand going back and forth in front of the camera. So what we're going to do is take our object and place it in the center of the turntable. Somewhere about right there looks good. And the nice thing about this real-time preview is for a lot of the cameras that we work with that are compatible, um, a lot of them do support exposure simulation, meaning that um, when we make changes to our camera settings, we're going to see that result in real-time. So first thing that we're going to see, I guess, here before I get into that is it looks quite uh, out of focus. So um, we can also control our camera's focal point manually or automatically. If I just toggle from this MF to AF, we're going to hear our camera refocus, and then you'll see on the screen here it's brought it back into focus. If we needed to, we could zoom in one-to-one -one and adjust our focal point through mouse clicks. And as you can see there, I'm just making a very fine focal point adjustment through mouse clicks to the drive lens tools just to ensure everything is in focus. Now, I'll touch back on this manual focus. It's very important here that we do shoot in manual focus when using this automated background removal tool. Um, the next thing that we're going to see is it looks quite dark here. So we're going to start to make changes to our camera settings, more specifically our shutter speed. And we want to find a good camera setting here that relatively gives us some good color accuracy. And overall, that looks pretty good there. Um, again, we are shooting with our medium LumiPad 360 lighting. The nice thing about these is they allow you to shoot on a pure white background if required. Um, kind of almost out of the camera or a very small adjustment but again we'll be talking about the background removal tool to completely remove the background onto a transparent background. Now our next step will be before we take our first picture is to enable crop and then click and drag on our live view window and define the shooting area. So I'm going to say only shoot a picture of what's inside this area right here and hit my snap button. Now we can see that's an image that was just captured. Um, let's go ahead and take a couple more different angles. I'll just reach over to my shoe and maybe we want to shoot a angle of the bottom of the shoe. And then maybe we'll shoot one more just on the inner side here. And this will be the three images that we need for our, you know, our e-commerce site here. So it looks pretty good there with positioning. And let me just snap that last image. Now our last step here is going to be we're going to enable live view again and because we're doing background removal with a reference image we're going to take a picture of just the background. And if you recall I put my camera to manual focus. If my camera was an autofocus and I tried to picture take a picture uh, it would fail. It wouldn't be able to kind of focus on anything. So ensure your camera's in manual focus and hit the snap button. So now we have a total of four images. We can see those are uploaded into the thumbnail gallery at the bottom. We can go ahead and view them and kind of inspect and say, okay, they look good. We're going to take all four of these images. Um, they're already selected here. I'll enter into the editing tool. And our first step will be to click on the background only image. And we're going to make our background only image as the reference image. We can see it was imported successfully. Now we're going to use the previous and next buttons down here to scroll through the different images inside of the editing tool and find our first image that we want to take a look at. So this is a preview and what I'm going to say is blink the transparent area just so you can get a better understanding of what's being cut out and what's not being cut out. So we can see we have a pretty nice cutout up top but because there's a slight drop reflection that's not quite being cut out. So 
We're going to go ahead and start to make changes, and I'll just briefly dive into these tools right here as to kind of what they are. Uh, the first one's going to be constrained to a clicked region. Uh, this will be used if your object that you're shooting does not have holes inside of it. Um, if your object does have holes, you're going to use unconstrained selection. That would allow it to go beyond kind of a hard edge and start cutting out kind of the inside of a product. So obviously we don't need to do that here. So we're going to use constrained selection to clicked region. Uh, the next one is going to be our edge sensitivity. And what this tool does, it just defines a level of edge smoothing before applying the threshold. Um, next up, we do have our threshold, and this one's going to be the most important. This really helps you define the difference in kind of color. And let me kind of show you here what I do. When I increase my threshold, that's saying give me a wider value of color between the background reference image and the image that we're editing. And as you can see, when we had it low, maybe at, you know, two or three, it didn't have enough variance to start to take out this kind of drop reflection. So if I take this higher, we're going to see it starts to actually cut out the subject here and the background. And that's looking like a nice cutout there. Um, you're going to see if I did take it too high, we're going to start to see it actually cuts out the inside of our product. So obviously you don't want to do that. We're going to take this just and kind of find our optimal setting there. Value of 10 we'll be using. Uh, next up, we have our mask processing tools. And um, this one, I'm going to use apply to new mask selection only. Um, and we're going to do, there's a hole fill radius. Maybe there's holes, for instance, inside of your product and you want to start filling those. Um, you could use that to start increasing and you're going to kind of see what happens there when I increase that. Your spec removal, you can see this little dot right here. Maybe it's a piece of dust or, you know, dirt on the on the surface that you're you're shooting basically it's defined in pixels and as i increase that you're going to see it gets rid of that little that little dot right there so we could do a little bit of spec removal here our mask grow radius um let me just take that down to zero you're going to see there's a slight white hue around the outside of our kind of product mask grow will actually grow that mask into the subject and i'll typically use a value of about uh, two or three and uh, that's defined in pixels and it's going to eat that mask again into the actual subject and then our last one is our edge blending and the edge blending it's just the sharpness of the transition between the foreground and the background we typically suggest a value of about zero to five and uh, you can see kind of as i make these changes kind of what happens here so i'm just going to use a value of two now what i can do is hit apply or apply to all I could go through and also start looking at my next images that I'd shot and say, okay, that's given a pretty nice cutout there too. Oops, but we missed this part right here, so I might have to increase my threshold just a tad. And that's looking good. And we could look at our last image here and say, okay, that looks quite good there. We're doing a good job with the cutout. Now simply what I want to do is hit the apply to all button, and that's going to apply it in the batch process. All right, so we've just completed the cutout here. Let's go ahead and inspect. I'm just going to hold control on my keyboard, and now I'll hold the mouse click. Sorry, that was control with the mouse zoom, and we can see it does a very nice cutout from the product, from the background. Look at our other images here, and it looks like we did an overall very good job. Uh, one thing it did miss, uh, just this little part right here, and let me just show you how we can click, quickly clean that up. We can go back into this background removal tool and just select that point right there. If you recall, it was constrained selection to a clicked region, and I will just hit apply. All right, that looks good. So we have our three images. Now what we can do is go ahead and save these out. Um, we have multiple different formats. Uh, let me just quickly show you. Um, JPEG, TIFF, PNG, RAW, and the original. Um, TIFF and PNG will constrain, or sorry, will retain the transparent properties of the images. Um, now, transitioning this a little bit further, um, what we could do is, and pardon me, let me go back just to kind of show you. Now, the last settings that we used here, um, if you recall, um, it's, it's going to retain those. Um, and uh, what we can do is, if we need to maybe want to auto-apply this setting, so instead of going into the editing tool, what we can do is go up to our options area and say, BR options apply after br capture we're going to use our br image 
Now, what that's going to do is if I hit live view again, instead of capturing the image onto, you know, just as is, it's going to automatically apply this editing setting. So let me just place my subject back on. We're going to take one more picture here. And what we're going to see is after it captures the image, it's going to automatically process that onto the transparent background. So it's a nice throughput now is as long as you don't have to make changes to the BR tool, what you can start doing is obviously adjust your subject. I'd probably want to adjust my, my focal point here, but we'll just quickly hit snap. And we're going to see it captures the image and instantly cuts it out for us. So very, uh, very good for workflow efficiencies here.